Hey Crafty Fam, it's Alex Vanover and I am back with another invitation tutorial for wedding month this month on my channel, DIY Alex. And I am super excited to bring this to you guys because I know how curious you are about belly bands. So today that's what I'm going to show you how to make. And we're gonna do it the really, really simple way. We're not even gonna start out with our Cricut and then the Cricut will come in later and I will show you how that is going to work. So to begin, we're gonna make a belly band really, really similar to this one but you need a piece of cardstock that you wanna make your belly band out of. You're gonna need some sort of paper trimmer. So I'm just using this one from Fiskars that I got at Hobby Lobby. And you're going to need a double-sided adhesive. So I am using um, Craft Blanc, craft bond glue dots. I don't necessarily recommend using these. I think a double-sided adhesive tape is better. Um, so I will link one for you in the description on Amazon. But of course, when I'm trying to film this video, I am out of that um, double-sided adhesive. And then you don't necessarily have to have this, but a boning tool is really helpful for pretty much any paper crafting project. So you may wanna grab one of those. And then this is gonna be optional also, but as you can see, I put a little like monogram V in the center of my invitation, just because I think it makes the belly band look a little more finished. So I literally just cut some Vs out of um, like regular copy paper on Microsoft Word. These are just dark green to match my invitation and I just spaced them out and cut them with my paper trimmer. So again, that's optional, but that's an option that you can use. So the first step to making your belly band is finding a size that you really like, and that's where your paper trimmer is going to come in handy. So first you wanna make sure to flip out the ruler on your paper trimmer, and you're just gonna start playing with some different like lengths and widths and things like that that you think you wanna make your belly band. So I think I made mine about one inch, and that's about um, what I like. I kinda like this moderate look. I have seen lots of belly bands that are a lot thicker than this, and I've seen some that are a lot thinner as well. So you can really get creative with um, the sizing and what you think looks good. Um, I also wanna bring up that I really like belly bands because the last invitation that I made in my last tutorial was a gatefold card and I think that belly bands are really helpful for that because it does a good job of helping keep the card closed. Otherwise, you may have these flaps that kind of want to stay open forever. So the belly band is not only pretty and makes your invitation look really finished, but it also helps keep your card closed. But you can do belly bands on pretty much any kind of card that you like. So you have tons of options there. So let's start playing around. Um, I'm just going to move my paper until it's about one inch over the line. Oops, I got a piece of paper caught in there. There we go. So you just kind of want to put that across your invitation and see how you think it looks, whether you want to go bigger or smaller or however that's going to work. Another thing that you need to make sure that you do as you're playing with different sizes is you want to make sure to write down the sizes that you are using because we are going to put these in design space and allow our Cricut to cut these here in a few minutes, but not just yet. And you don't want to make your shapes the wrong size. So make sure that you are taking notes on the different sizes that you like and the different sizes that you're trying so that you know, um, what you want to make it when you cut the final belly bands. So um, I really like the size of this one, so I'm going to show you guys how you would assemble this. So most people like to put the um, belly band starting in the back and wrap it around to the front. And when you're bending this crease, you don't want to make it super, super tight. You want to make it just tight enough so that the belly band holds on there nicely, but it can also slide up and down easily so that it's not hard to open your card. So you're just gonna kind of bring these inward a little bit. Make sure that that slides really, really nice. So after you get these to overlap, the next step in making your belly band needs to be to make these creases really, really nice and tight before you use any adhesive. So I like to flip mine over to the back like this. And I like to use my boning tool and um, use the edge of it here to really deepen that crease so that it is a nice, um, nice creased fold. And as long as you do it on the back of your invitation, it's not that big of a deal. So then you wanna go ahead and um, see if you're gonna cut any off. So I think I'm gonna try to cut about, I don't know, maybe a half inch off of this one. So 
So I want to make sure to put it up against my ruler and write down what I am cutting off. So that would be an inch. So let's go about there. That way I'm just not overlapping a ton of paper and making my invitation heavier. All right. And that looks a little bit better. So you want to make sure that you leave pen, plenty of paper overlapping so that it's easy to glue, but not so much that you're wasting a bunch of paper. So the next thing that you would do is use your double-sided adhesive or your glue dot, and we're going to go ahead and glue these two together. And I am super sloppy with these glue dots. So again, I don't recommend using these like I am. This is what I have in my craft room right now, so this is what I'm using. But I would definitely use some double-sided adhesive tape if you are making a bunch of these. And of course, you want to make sure you don't stick any to the card itself. And that's going to make sure that your belly band stays together. So next we need to work on the size of the little square that we want to go over top of this fold so that we kind of hide that line. So I think what I tried before was about two inches. So I have about 11 inches of paper left, um, left on my sheet of cardstock. So I'm going to go down to about nine inches here. And then I'm going to cut a, um, couple inch strip I can use the ruler on the side of my blade and just cut a couple inch strip this way and then turn it to cut the other way and that is definitely not a perfect so I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this side whoops Oops, <laughs> didn't get a perfect cut there. It's kind of hard to do these little tiny shapes. All right. Let's check and see what that looks like on top of our invitation. I like the way that looks and it's about centered. So I'm just gonna flip over my little square here and stick another glue dot on the back. and center it the best I can and stick it down. And now my belly band looks a lot classier and you don't see any folds, whoops, <laughs> you don't see any folds in the entire invitation. So then I'm gonna trim out a little V and I'll show you guys how to put that in the center. So you're just gonna kind of cut these the best that you can. These would be really, really easy to cut um, with a lot at once, once you get a good size figured out. So you'll have to play around with how that works on the sizing of your belly bands, but that would end up being super easy. And you can use fancier paper than I did. I think that the copy paper works just fine, especially because that's gonna be protected and backed by like glitter cardstock. And glitter cardstock is so thick that I don't think you'd have any issues, but if you would feel better about it, you can certainly use cardstock or something a little more sturdy. Move it down just a little. You can always trim off more, but you can't put any back, so always keep that in mind. I think I might trim in the sides a little bit so it looks a little more like a square. Be super careful with this blade right here. Ask me how I know. I have definitely taken some injuries from my paper trimmer before when I'm not paying attention, so make sure that you are very, very careful. All right, and let's put this on top of our invitation and see how it looks. So I like the way that it looks. It's honestly a little bit small probably for the size of this square, but you guys can certainly play around and see what you like because the belly bands and the design of your invitation is all about you. So that's the fun part of projects like this is it's literally all your preference. There are no right and wrong rules about how this works. I also don't like the glue dots because they end up making the copy paper look a little bit wrinkled. So keep that in mind also. But I think for a quick mock-up, this is pretty cute.
So let's go into design space and we'll go ahead and put in the measurements for our belly band and our square and we will, um, I'll show you how to let the Cricut cut all these out for you. All right, so let's go ahead and insert some shapes so that we can make up our belly band. So you're just gonna go under the basic shapes panel and choose a square. And the first thing that we will do is size our little middle square piece. And that was about two inches by two inches. So that's our first piece out of the way. And then we will go back into the shapes panel and choose another square. But in order to make this a rectangle, we're gonna click the unlock button here in the bottom corner. And we're gonna put the width as about 11 and a half inches because that's about how wide uh, we sliced our rectangle on the paper trimmer. And then our height was about one inch. And so those are the only two pieces that you really need to cut. Um, so the way that you could make this easier is you could duplicate it here, or you can even go into make it and you could up the project copies right here to make it even easier on yourself. So let's say we wanted to make four of them and it's just gonna add four right here. So in order to make the belly bands, you would just click continue and we're gonna see what setting, and keep in mind that your paper setting is gonna need to gonna need to match the paper that you're using. So I'm gonna check for glitter cardstock and that's what we'll use. So let me cut this guy real quick and I'll show you guys how it turned out. As you guys can see, the belly band that my Cricut cut for me is just as beautiful as the one that I was able to cut for myself. Of course, when I have my Cricut, I was able to make my um, square a little more perfectly square, and I was able to learn from my first mistake and make my V cut a little bit larger so that it takes up a little more cardstock around the square of my belly band, but overall, I'm super happy with how these turned out. And if you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe to DIY Alex. February 2020 is wedding month here on my channel so I'm going to be doing wedding crafts and wedding planning tips the entire month of February 2020 so make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any of that but even if you're watching this after February 2020 I have tons of valuable wedding content on my channel so make sure that you subscribe for that and ring the bell right next to subscribe so that you never miss a new upload and if you haven't already please make sure that you join my Facebook group Cricut Brides and Wedding Crafts we are an awesome little community where we talk all things DIY wedding, wedding planning, and all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure that you join us there. I'm Alex Vanover, and I hope we can craft again soon.